I'm looking so much for forward to the rest of the weekend. Sorry about that. My mic was a little low. So once again, I just want to thank everybody for joining me today on the Unboozy Foodie. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I did, even though my family is not here. I still had an opportunity to enjoy myself. Um, I spent it with friends um, and people that I consider family. So those of you that know me um, know that I'm originally from Los Angeles and my family is back in Los Angeles. So hopefully they know that I love them. You know, I didn't get a chance to visit them this week, this <laughs> this Thanksgiving or this holiday. When I'm not sure what <laughs> the future will bring. Who knows what uh, you know? The next couple of months will be. Anyway, I am again glad that you all are here and joining me for the Umbuji Foodie. I want to um, actually kind of jump back into. Last week, I kind of didn't do a, a good service to a specific <laughs> restaurant that I had gone to. I, I'm not proud of that. I'm really not. So I want to kind of like talk about that a little bit further. And that's Ice House. You know, at the end, of, I got so wrapped up with talking about, uh, you know, doing, you know, Thanksgiving, how to do it on, you know, if it's the first time that you're doing it or hosting, um, you know, to do it easy and for it not to be very cumbersome for you uh, or worrisome at that. But um, I got again, I got so wrapped up in doing and talking about that and giving some suggestions and ideas, um, you know, that uh, research I was finding on all uh, recipes dot com um, and other areas that I didn't go into more detail about Ice House. Uh, and I, I really feel that I need to talk to you a little bit more about Ice House. Ice House is located in South Minneapolis. And the reason why I even went there um you know, I had an opportunity many weeks ago, as you all know, to cover and talk about the Battle of the Food Trucks in Maplewood, uh, which was really awesome. And while I was there, I did a brief, you know, go live on Facebook about uh, being there and the different types of foods that we were having. And a couple, you know, they apparently were they were overhearing my 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 broadcast, if you would. And um, they were telling me about so many other different things. And even though I told them that, you know, I would focus uh, more on the east side of St. Paul, St. Paul and surrounding areas, uh, they really encouraged me to come along with them to this 10 course um, meal tasting uh, at Ice House. And again, I know I touched on it last week, but just to give you a little bit more information on it. It the address is two five two eight Nicolette Avenue. That's in Minneapolis, Minnesota, five five four zero four. Uh, you could find their menu um, on at Ice House, M P L S. That's Ice House Minneapolis dot com. Um, and you know, I, you know, I wasn't sure what I was prepared for. Um, at that particular time, when they were telling me ten course meal, I'm like. How does someone have a ten course meal? Uh, I don't. I don't even think that's possible. <laughs> I mean, I know it is, but uh, it's just. I don't know. You think that it's a whole lot of food, and, and you don't want it to be because you want to be able to enjoy yourself and know that okay, the food is excellent, and you know I didn't overstuff myself. So anyway, um, yeah, I was I, I wasn't sure what to expect. I know that it was going to be good food and they were going to the chef was going to prepare the food very well because they knew one another. Um, so shout out to uh, to John and Kathy. Thank you all so much for the invitation. Again, I don't think I gave you guys a shout out. So I really do appreciate it. And definitely Chef Matthew at Ice House. Um, I want to give a shout out to you as well. Um, you know, again, your staff uh, and the way you prepared the food was just amazing. Um, I Again, I know that we talk about uh, focusing on, you know, restaurants 
you know, bringing you new and exciting restaurants in the community. But then, you know, we have others that if you'd like to travel out to Minneapolis and at least have some type of ideas of what else is out there, because definitely uh, ones within your uh, neighborhood are just as exciting, certainly. Uh, but to have uh, an opportunity to and and I know I said 10 course meal, but um, they also have, offer a five course meal as well. So if you're not sure about, OK, I don't think you know my, I can handle a 10 course meal. Trust me, you really can. So if you feel much better about doing the five course meal, um, it's considerably uh, affordable um, many people that I've talked to, friends, coworkers that I've talked to, um, when I tell them the price and um, you know the type of meal that I had, they were very surprised and excited. You know, for you know, exa- for example, the ten course meal uh, I had it for forty dollars. Um, that was not on any type of special. It was that's the standard price or whatnot. Um, and again. As you, as I said, I paid for my meal. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't. Hey, I'm done bougie foodie, and I'm <laughs> going in there, and I'd like some free food. No, not at all. Um, they didn't really know me. Uh, in although they knew the the gentleman that um, invited me. Yes, I go and pay for my food. <laughs> That's what makes me the unbougie foodie, I suppose. <laughs> but anyway. Um, as I was saying, you know, it was $40 and others that I've spoken to, they're like for the 10 course meal. Are you sure about that? I'm like, I'm positive. Now, mind you, December 1st, the price is going to change a bit and it's going to go up an additional $10. So it'll be $50. Um, and you know, even at that price, uh, friends and co-workers, they were once again saying, you know, I've gone to a 10 course meal and spent $80 or $70 or something like that. I feel that this is a bargain. So even if you want to treat yourself one time and maybe, you know, girlfriend, partner, you know, certainly go out and enjoy, uh, you know, a, a meal tasting. There are other restaurants, though. So, you know, don't get me wrong. There are other restaurants that do have meal tastings and so forth. Um, This was my very first one. So maybe I'm a bit, I don't know. (laughs) I'm not biased, but my excitement uh, to go to my very first one and for it to be as phenomenal as it was. um, I look forward to going to others as well. But as I mentioned, they also have a five course. The five course right now is uh, $25. And that's, again, five courses. Uh, and, you know, December 1st, however, it is going to go up to 35 So, you know, again, c- considering what it was before and what it is going to by December 1st, still an affordable um, bargain, if you would. Uh, to have a really great meal Uh, so you know they are again located at 2528 Nicolette Avenue that's in Minneapolis uh, South Minneapolis so those that are familiar and it's it's down if you know Nicolette Avenue they refer to it as Eat Street you know there are a number of restaurants that are down this uh, this road or this avenue if you would um, that are renowned for serving really, really great food. And that's not to take away anything from what we have here on Payne Avenue. I mean, I've talked about cooks, tongue in cheek, which I got to go back to. So tongue in cheek, if you're listening, uh, you know who I am. (laughs) Uh, And so look out for me to come back and, and visit. But over here on Payne Avenue is, I mean, we could, we, Someone's got to come up with a name over here on Payne Avenue because Nicolette has Eat Street. What are we going to call Payne Avenue? We need to call Payne Avenue something because there are wonderful restaurants over here on Payne Avenue. Uh, Magnolia's is good. Um, You know, the other small, well, I'm about to say small businesses. Uh, Remember today, folks, is Small Business Saturday. So please go out and support your small businesses. I mean, 
even restaurants have our small businesses you know they don't have a franchise or they don't have a number of different uh restaurant you know brick and mortar places throughout the city and might again be one in your local neighborhood uh and we know for instance tongue-in-cheek cooks magnolias there's cora's wings uh wings chicken and wings i'm forgetting the name for cora's so i apologize but again this is small business saturday and it's not just about furnitures clothing and so forth you know hardware uh gifts small gifts and so forth if you want to take your family to uh, a really nice restaurant consider one of the restaurants within your local neighborhood i'm excited i don't know if anybody knows and i'm jumping around a little bit i'll get back to ice house in just a moment because there's some stuff i want to talk about on there the you know the meal that i had more about the meal that i had but it, you know i'm switching gears because i, I feel i want to mention up front about small business saturday uh and places like i've already mentioned but i there's one particular one that i always seem to pass and it's mexa mexi italian i believe uh and i believe it is on the corner of um maryland and arcade but i'll i'll be going to visit that um next week so i'll be able to talk about that and share my food experiences um or food experience i should say about going to uh that to mex italian um you know it's and I I remember going to their website and it talked about um, a Mexican pizza uh, and there are a variety of different uh, styles if you would or options that they offer on their menu so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it so much um, anyway sorry that's another small business that you know is in your local neighborhood that you might you know it might be out for lunch stop in and even if you'd like share your experience you know give me uh some feedback on your experience and and any place that you're going to uh please feel free to share with me on facebook at the Umbuji foodie uh you could always email me maybe a suggestion or maybe what your experience was at a restaurant and um you know say hey you need to go here and talk about it on the radio and share it with the rest of the community um you can email me at the unbougie foodie at gmail.com again the unbougie foodie at gmail.com or you could visit my twitter page um which is un uh, excuse me uh, the underscore unbougie foodie uh, or un, uh, instagram at unbougie foodie so remember those <laughs> please remember those um, anyway going back to ice house I I got a little bit excited there. Sorry about that. (laughs) Ice house. So again, 10 course meal. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but the ones that really stood out for me and all of them did, but ones that just grabbed my attention so much. And I feel I need to share with uh, anyone that is interested in, going <laughs> to ice house or even any other um restaurant that offers a meal tasting this is just something that uh, i'm quite sure that any restaurant that offers a meal tasting they will re- their chefs or uh, the preparers of the of the meal will be creative and listen to their patrons or to those that are you know there to enjoy that meal tasting and what i really appreciated more than anything about um ice house and hopefully that there are other restaurants that also do this as well or take their customers and patrons into consideration they actually ask ahead of time do you have any food allergies and that's a big thing because many might be either gluten intolerant. Uh, there may be, you know, 
different types of meats uh, or vegetables that they may may be allergic to. The fact that they are willing to even ask that question and uh, turn or prepare that meal around maybe one particular individual. And I'm not saying, you know, because of one person, they will actually change the whole entire, entire menu. No, they will cater specifically to that individual that may have a food allergy or, you know, is have some type of issue with maybe a type of meat or vegetable or so forth, they will actually cater and modify that individual's uh, meal preparation or tasting or plating, I'll say, so that everyone is still enjoying that uh, that meal tasting experience. Uh, but, you know, there may be one that uh, is, like I mentioned, gluten free. Uh, or they feel they need to be gluten free because of um, you know a particular condition or health um, issue. Um, very accommodating, very very accommodating. So these different uh, foods that they offered or that they prepared, you know, for the evening. Um, I mean, we didn't have any food allergies to be concerned with, um, but you know, I think they still. Uh, their best foot forward uh, in preparing the meals. Um, A great example is a fried green tomato. And that's just the dish. But the fried green tomato came with a shrimp romulade. Uh, A romulade is more of a salad or seafood dressing. It's made with hard-boiled eggs, um, oil and vinegar, and then a flavor with mustard, capers, and and herbs and so forth. so the shrimp itself was cooked in that ramelade and then it was in a sriracha batter. So again, for a fried green tomato, which, you know, th- these things were so locally grown and prepared, um, the f- g- tomatoes themselves, um, the chef mentioned that his mother has a garden and the vegetables that he, especially the tomatoes, had come from his mother's garden that morning. So I thought that that was just really, uh, one, exciting because they are locally um, sourcing their uh, vegetables and even some and meats as well. Uh, But that particular dish, he had a personal investment in it, if you would, um, because, you know, he I'm quite sure he felt very proud that it was coming from a garden, you know, his mother's garden. I know I would be. That's for sure. Uh, but then the shrimp ramen blood itself and um, it being in a spicy sriracha batter, um, it wasn't overly spicy, folks. I know sriracha can be kind of scary, <laughs> but in this case, it was not. Everything just worked. And as they say, everything was married together um, and provided a really great taste in every bite of that green, fried green tomato and the shrimp it was perfect. Um, that was, I'm skipping around a little bit because like I said, I'm not going to tell you everything, but these are just things that or ones, uh, certain dishes or courses out of the 10 that I really felt a strong attach attachment to <laughs> or attraction, whichever. But the next was, that was uh, course number three. Course number four, which, you know, I've never gone to a restaurant and they have what's referred to as a a palate cleansing appetizer and I would think that this next course would have been a dessert I mean really it could have been a dessert on its own but again it was course number four and it was described as a green apple sorbet with cranberry foam and caramel pie crumble so picture a uh, caramel pie crumble, almost like a, a apple crumble. Uh, so the crumble is at the bottom, and then on top of that is the cram is a cranberry foam. Cran- the cranberry foam being uh, cranberries and cream whipped very very uh, lightly or heavily, I should say. So that's very light and airy, and literally is just actually a foam. Well, that's the other layer. And then on top of that cranberry foam is the green apple sorbet. Now, there, other than 
the, the closest thing that I could tell you that it comes to, it would be a so it would be much lighter than your standard sorbet. You know, you know, your standard sorbet that you could buy at the at the grocery store. You know, sometimes they have raspberry, lemon, rainbow. I like rainbow. Um, this was on a level of because with those you could still kind of taste some crystallizations of ice and and so forth and small ice pieces, and that's fine. I mean, those are blended very, very fine and very, very smooth. This uh, green apple sorbet was on a totally different level. One that literally would melt in your mouth as soon as you put it on your tongue. So, uh, again, green apple sorbet. Yeah. Course number four. It was it was an amazing palate cleanser. And those that are not familiar with palate cleansing or palate, what palate, palate cleanser is, um, it really is that it's helping to other dishes or tastes that you've had, uh, you know, the prior three or four uh, items that we had uh, while we were starting the meal tasting. They want to now cleanse your palate or so that you have a fresh taste in your mouth so that the next thing that they uh, present to you or uh, pro- you know, prepare for you that you're about to eat is just going to cause all those flavors to burst in your mouth. Um, and believe me, uh, it, it they really were preparing us for some wonderful other dishes because the next one was a smoked eggplant uh, angelotti. Um, and uh, angelotti is more, and I didn't pronounce that correctly. Yeah, maybe I did. <laughs> But it's a pasta uh, square that's stuffed with uh, a variety of fillings, now, almost like a ravioli. And in this case, like I said, it was smoked eggplant, uh, wild mushrooms, fortina um, fondue, uh, and a, like a cheese. And then um, drizzled all across that was a bacon vinaigrette. Now, <laughs> we were, <laughs> it was funny while we were sitting there and they were preparing so many other dishes for i mean the entire restaurant not just us but here you have in it's an open air or open area for i mean you're seeing the the actual uh, chef and sous chefs uh working feverishly um in an open area so picture uh, if you've ever watched um hell's kitchen with gordon ramsay (laughs) again (laughs) That's not a plug, <laughs> but it's just, you know, an experience when you see these chefs and they're in an open area such as that. Imagine that's the exact same thing as Ice House, just a little bit better <laughs> and not so frantic with people running around the place. But here these are when they're preparing them, you see different ingredients that they're pulling and that they're uh, bringing from out of. Uh, refrigeration um but someone pointed out that they had and i'll i'll just say it what it was described or how it was labeled it was bacon bit well bacon fat if you would so they had re- cooked bacon and reduced that down and had it in i'd say a five gallon container <laughs> I mean, it was clear and with the purpose of them being able to see, uh, you know, where the liquid and the separation of the fat is and so forth. And you're thinking, oh, that sounds gross. These are the types of uh, food ingredients that are used to make your these dishes that I'm referring to and I'm talking about. Um, But even at home and you've probably even seen your grandparents or your parents probably even save certain you know bacon uh chicken well i don't know about chicken bacon more so than anything i think you know if anything with bacon uh you see them pour it in maybe a jar or you know a can a coffee can i'm sorry i'm going way back to childhood and talking about all of that but uh, to see that in the kitchen, in their kitchen at Ice House, it brought back memories of that as well. 
Um, of course, someone again had to bring that to my attention, but it was just it was exciting to see. Uh, and if you are not familiar with why they're these are kept or they uh, keep these in containers and so forth, uh, you have no idea the difference in, in flavor and taste when you are able to utilize um, certain literally fats and greases uh, to prepare, you know, to fry or saute perhaps, uh, you know, maybe Brussels sprouts. Oh, yeah, my favorite. Uh, asparagus, um, different other meats, too, uh, or vegetables uh, with that that extra flavoring. And the reason for that is because you don't have to add additional salts and herbs and and so forth. If you're already using a flavored uh gr- fat um you know to prepare the meal uh if you do have to use any type of seasonings it will be much much less than uh having to truly add salt add uh pepper uh your flavoring is already there so trust me when i tell you that it's it's not gross (laughs) it really is with a purpose of being able to flavor your food and uh for you know you to have a really great experience so yeah bacon start to save it (laughs) Uh, you'll find that recipes call for it too so you know coconut oil bacon fat grease um some of i am not truly not a french cook but some of the you know french cooking and calls for some of that hey grab a a teaspoon of or a tablespoon of bacon grease <laughs> and you're like bacon grease anyway <laughs> that was uh, course number five at a uh, smoked eggplant the next uh, number six uh, smoked salmon uh, the smoked salmon it had a uh, dill sauce potatoes and horseradish cream sauce and you know, I, I referred to this back uh, last week um, that you could see these photos of these items on my Facebook page. So if you look, if you search for Ice House uh, on my page, um, you'll certain and you'll see a number. I think there might be about 20 different photos, if I'm not mistaken, um, that show, you know, Ice House uh, as, you know, within the picture. Um, but each one of these, I tried to. I said I was going to put descriptions. I think I did. Maybe I didn't. I apologize. Um, But Instagram has them as well. (laughs) So please look on Facebook. If you're wanting to, uh, longing to see these different types of dishes that are um, being made or that I'm talking about, please visit my Facebook page and um, certainly uh, see them out there. The next... uh, now, again, number six was the smoked salmon. The next one and the last one that I'm going to actually talk about is uh, a pastrami beef rib. Now, this pastrami beef rib. Now, again, considering that this is a 10 course meal, I'm thinking, OK, these portions are going to be very small, small enough that you could get a taste, maybe one or two bites out of each one of these. Uh, and then, you know, with the dessert, uh, And then, of course, you know, they offer um, pairings for cocktails or wine, if you'd like uh, adult beverages Um, with this pastrami beef rib. It literally, if you're familiar with pastrami, if you like pastrami, you will love this pastrami beef rib. And I say beef rib, but on the regular menu, it is ribs, plural. So you are literally getting two or three of these large, humongous ribs. And the pastrami taste is amazing. The way that they have cured this beef with uh, that pastrami seasoning. uh, And then, you know, they have it um, plated on top of cauliflower, cauliflower. uh, And this is... This is going to sound like a bougie term, but it is simply the way something is prepared. So you go to a restaurant. Yes, I am the unbougie foodie, but the words that some that 
some places describe, they yes, they do sound a little bit oh high society (laughs) and I'm just bringing it to you making sure that we talk you know I hopefully give you some type of description of what they're referring to so that it doesn't sound so so bougie (laughs) Um, so with that beef rib there is a cauliflower pavé and all a pavé is is it's a mousse um, normally, it would be, um, it's, and this is going to sound very interesting to some, maybe even enticing to others, but it's referred to as being a cold mousse that normally includes meat, fish, or poultry poultry um, that's cut into rectangular or square shapes so that you could individually serve them. And that could either be on maybe with a cracker or crackers um, or just as an individual Uh, serving itself in this case rather than serving or you know making this mousse with meat they made it with a vegetable which is that's why again referred to it as the cauliflower pavé and uh, in the photo that i took uh it it just looks like a, a small rectangular uh cream that's been layered across uh the plate itself but the mixture of having the meat and or taking a bite of perhaps the the meat or if you're cleaning it off the bone like I did (laughs) Um, and then uh, dipping it in the cauliflower pavé and they also included uh, porter mustard Um, porter mustard is just the standard mustard that you would normally have with a pastrami so they've incorporated that whole like pastrami uh, standard pastrami sandwich taste uh, with a flair of the cauliflower pavé and of course having the beef ribs because who has ever really had a pastrami beef rib I, I have not if you have you are ahead of the game of the unbougie foodie <laughs> and I congratulate you but this was an awesome piece of of rib uh and it was large it was not uh it and it had meat on it i mean a beef rib of course is going to have a lot more uh meat on the bone but uh it was such a great size it was such the the taste of the rib and again the cauliflower pavé and the mustard mixed together um you know seriously being able to cut that meat off the bone with a knife a butter knife at that um, was awesome it was perfect uh, so man I tell you I could I could go on about the other um, dishes or courses that we had but time does not permit so I am so thankful that I had the opportunity to talk more about Ice House and again uh, if you want to know more about Ice House definitely visit their uh, face um, their uh, website which is icehouse m as in mary p l s dot com uh, you'll be able to find their menus and other items that they offer so a number of the things that i w- i talked about today and mentioned today are on their menu some things are not so keep in mind that uh, with these meal tastings this is at the discretion of the chef uh, so it is possible that they might decide to change things up. And so everything that you see on the menu is not something that you are going to get a small piece of um, at these tastings. It will be uh, interesting and creative um, appetizers or bites of uh, a specific dish um, that you will be able to that the chef will be able to prepare and give you just an opportunity to taste. And that's all. Um, but still, the fact that you're able to enjoy that uh, experience um, and they make it so accommodating is um, is something that I think everyone should experience. So please, um, if you're on a date uh, or you want to do something uh, interesting, uh, you know, either a special occasion or just a special night, uh, a date night. Uh, if it's not Ice House, definitely find uh, a meal tasting, uh, 
a restaurant that offers meal tasting and take advantage of it so that you'll also experience the different types of foods that are not only on the menu, but if you go to a different restaurant, you never know. They might be able to offer something um, that fits your appetite or your taste. So Ice House, thank you again so much, so, so much. Again, they're located at 2528 Nicolette Avenue, Minneapolis. The next place I want to talk about um you know i i'm i'm really thankful that um even though i i'm just going to put it out there because you know everyone here at WEQY uh, is willing to share their expertise and knowledge and food experiences um the, on different topics and then of course mine again food experiences um they want are willing to share that on a volunteer level uh so appreciate the fact that they are giving of themselves of the community um i mean we're providing information to you out in the community so that you are familiar you're happy you know specifically how these uh, are actually going, uh, you know, it's all done, you know, volunteer. I mentioned that because, you know, these, you know, the opportunity to have, uh, you know, going out to these different me- uh, meals and, and places and invitations and, and so forth. It's not just by my own volition if you would sometimes i get an invitation so you know these invitations are you know what give me an opportunity to talk about certain places so yes my focus definitely is on um, my my neighborhood the community uh, that weqy is (laughs) is in uh and but if there are other areas that I am actually being invited to go to, I want to make sure that you all are having an opportunity to hear about these experiences as well, because uh, it's important for everyone to have an opportunity to uh, enjoy great food. And I think everybody loves that. So, you know, it, I always talk about, you know, I'm always going out to places that are reaching Uh, you know different neighborhoods not just St. Paul but hey Minneapolis uh, you know it's funny because my my sister she's in California and she's like do you need somebody to be a a, a foodie in California and I'm like "Um, (laughs) no probably not right now (laughs) maybe in the future who knows but again I I say that because there is another place called uh, Town Hall Tap um, they are located uh, on 48th and Chicago, a um, little bit out of the way. But uh, again, for the folks that are streaming, uh, you know, any of the shows uh, from WEQI or any of the show hosts um, for myself, if you're interested in uh, a food experience down where you live in Edina, I know I have some friends that are in Edina uh, or in that neighborhood area that know about town hall tap um and my experience there was uh was awesome um i won't talk about any type of beverages that i had there in the morning it was brunch what can i say i uh but their food um is top notch uh and i think i would just want to talk about one or two things before we move on but uh, one was the munchkin and the munchkin is it's described as being three eggs uh, scrambled with sausage, bacon, onions, mushrooms and provolone cheese. And then it's served on a bed of breakfast potatoes. Um, and it was a variety of tastes um, being that, uh, you know, one, the breakfast potatoes there. I sometimes some places they serve breakfast potatoes kind of really big or or overly seasoned i think they really want to focus more so on the actual uh eggs and the ingredients and how it was being prepared uh more than anything so even though that whole mixture of 
uh, having the breakfast but breakfast potatoes and the eggs um, I think I I really enjoyed uh, more so about the eggs and everything that they put in it and it gave you an opportunity to taste everything uh, because it's not just the standard sausage these are uh, in-house made sausages um, yes they do crumble them and, and put them in the eggs so it was it was perfect uh, the next was, and I'm just going to say it, it was a brioche French toast. Now, a brioche, if you're not familiar, again, I know it sounds like a bougie term. <laughs> it's just the type of food that, or or in this case, the type of pastry that is actually used. So it's a brioche French toast. Uh, brioche is a light French bread or cake or some type of pastry. It has a rich dough and, okay, cholesterol yeah, I'd probably be careful because it has a whole lot of butter and eggs when you're making it. But, you know, you don't have it that often. So, hey, it, you know, you, you have it. You got to enjoy yourself every now and then. So anyway, but it was two thick slices of brioche bread that were dipped and toasted. Um, so, again, this is a French toast. Uh, but then it was topped with caramelized uh, apples and the caramelized it literally this this pastry i'm gonna say pastry i'm not gonna really say toast or bread this was a pastry because you would cut this with the fork and you needed no syrup so if you've ever had any type of uh maybe pancakes or a french toast that is just it needs nothing else you might have some powdered sugar on it might have some strawberries and whipped cream yeah no i'm talking about added stuff but still uh to cut this with a fork and to taste it without any type of um, syrup is perfect uh, it was uh, an amazing experience for uh, being at Town Hall Tap so <laughs> I want to move on uh, I was uh, distracted a bit <laughs> not, a, not a, it was in a good way our station manager came and uh <laughs> came in for a moment <laughs> uh, anyway um, gosh oh man we're coming to the near the end of the show but I still have one other thing that I want to talk about which is I'm always talking about some type of recipe or something that you could make and this past week I had Brussels sprouts in my in my kitchen, so uh, I I was trying to think what could I make, what could I make with these Brussels sprouts, and the Brussels sprouts uh, they were in they were sitting in the refrigerator and I was like oh man I don't want them to go bad and what do I do what do I do oh we're gonna do I have chicken I like having peanuts and maybe something tart uh, with you know sort of a vegetable and I had just also gone to Aldi too and they had this it's a Boston lettuce the Boston lettuce uh, if you're from if you're not familiar it's a, a leafy green lettuce it's it's I suppose uh, maybe hand size uh, and the leaves are they're they're very they're very i say i'd say tender if you would they're not like a standard uh romaine or definitely not a a, a iceberg lettuce um or a, even a red leaf um lettuce these are small I, I i guess i would describe it as being the lettuce that would be used for maybe at a, a thai restaurant or Vietnamese restaurant that they would have a chicken and vegetable mix that you would actually have on the side and then this lettuce would come with it and you would use it as a wrap. Uh, that's the type of lettuce that was actually being used. So I decided that, well, I'm just going to kind of come up with something. And you know, I've had something like it similar in the past, but it, I don't think it had anything with uh, you know, because I had cashews, uh, again, cranberries. Um, I was going to do chicken. 
So I figured I might as well do this whole entire thing. So I'll just run down what it was. Um, I'll have called it the Brussels sprout chicken salad. So you take your Brussels sprouts. You could either shave them or if you have a chopper um, or if you're good with knife skills, you have great knife skills. Definitely chop those uh, to those Brussels sprouts are really fine. Um, you want to definitely take off the end of the stalks and so forth and uh, any leaves that look kind of brown, but definitely chop them up or shave them. The next thing you want to do is you take your Boston lettuce, uh, that leafy lettuce I was just talking about, and chop it uh, and just loosely chop it. Um, you know, the lettuce, uh, the, the leaves themselves are small, so maybe about four or five chops and you're done. You know, you probably could layer them and then just chop them four or five times and then you're done because you still want to have the Brussels sprouts themselves are going to be a smaller um, leaf uh, item within the salad. Um, and it's going to offer you a lot more texture here. You just want the lettuce to be um, uh, chopped small so that it's not as large when you're trying to uh, have all of the chicken, the uh, and all the other ingredients uh, be a taste on your fork. Um, the next, you would cube some chicken. Uh, and I say cube some chicken. Yeah, of course, you could either use chicken breast. Uh, you know, there are in the grocery stores, they offer roasted chicken. Um, you can chop up that chicken if you'd like. Or if you're great about cooking and grilling your own chicken, definitely do that. I used uh, chicken thighs. Um, so definitely did the deboning and taking off the extra skin. Uh, but after I cooked that light season uh, of salt and pepper and then cube the chicken, uh, definitely set those aside. You want them not to be dry, but just, you know, as you're preparing the other things, make sure that that is sitting and you'll have, you know, the opportunity to put all the other ingredients in together. The next, you want to add dried cranberries, or I added dried cranberries, um, and it's probably just about a half a cup of uh, dried cranberries, uh, a quarter cup of cashews, or the next uh, ingredients that I added, and then feta cheese. Feta cheese comes either uh, in, in a small container, uh, I think it might be considered, a, I think, an eight ounce, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you don't need a lot of the feta cheese itself because you just want to add uh, a, a kind of like not really a, a pungent taste. You want to add that a cream taste to it. And I think adding the feta cheese not only holds everything together, um, but it gives you a bit of um, a small bite uh, within the salad itself. So, hey, definitely mix in that feta cheese. The last thing, last things, these are the most important things, if you would, uh, or ingredients for this recipe. Olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Olive oil and balsamic vinegar, mix those together. Uh, that would be about, I'd say about, a, and you don't need a lot because all the other items or ingredients is help because you don't want it really wet, but then you don't want it really dry. The olive oil and the balsamic vinegar, it's almost like you're doing a vinaigrette. I didn't talk about that earlier, but um, you know, vinaigrette is really just some type of oil with um, you know some vinegar and then oil, uh, excuse me, um, herbs and maybe some other spices that you'd like to add just to brighten up the vinaigrette itself. And I take that back. You're also supposed to add some citrus along with that. So, you know, lemon. In this case, it's not that much of a vinaigrette, but it's just the oil and the balsamic vinegar mixed together. I didn't add any other spices or anything along with it. But I used uh, about a quarter cup of oil, uh, olive oil, and maybe about, uh, what, maybe about, three or four teaspoon tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. I had to remember. I, I, I know I wrote it down and, and whatnot, so I just wanted to check. But it was uh, three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. And mix that up and then poured it over and then tossed it all together. It was... Uh, I've been using the word perfect a lot today. I don't know why that is. <laughs> 
but it was a it was a great salad so if you want to find out more about that recipe uh, definitely look online on my facebook page um i'd be more than happy to pass that on if you'd like that by email as always you could make a request for that um, by contacting me at the unbougie foodie at gmail.com uh, or just again leave a, a message on my facebook page and well, I'll be more than happy to pass on any information about, in this case, the Brussels sprout chicken um, salad recipe or any of the other um, topics that I've touched on, uh, the restaurants that I've talked on um, today. Uh, remember that this is also a, a sharing of information between you all, your your friends, your people that are interested in food and are showing that interest by listening to the Unbougie Foodie. And I thank you for that. I really do appreciate you all, uh, all of the listeners that uh, have tuned in to WEQI uh, to follow the Unbougie Foodie and hear about the different types of food experiences that I have on a weekly basis. Know that I do this uh, because I care about being in the community, but you know I also care about food too. So it will always be about you know restaurants and places that you could eat in your local area. But there are also conscious food um, topics that I talk about as well. So just know that uh, you know it is about community, community building. Once again, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to WEQY 104.7, the voice of the East Side. I am Wesley Wright, your unbougie foodie. Tune in next week while I'll be talking about a coffee cup. It is a breakfast place that is at the corner of Rice and Arlington. So if you've been there, you know what I'm going to talk about, the portion sizes. Um, there is also going to be Mex Italian that I'm going to be um, visiting as well. So tune in again next week at 10 a.m. Well, you meet back here on WEQI 104.7 FM. Thank you so much again for joining us, joining me. And as always, never let anyone tell you what type of foodie to be, because really it is all about the food. <laughs>